Thank you for being here. I've spoken on many occasions about my commitment to ensuring that all children receive healthy meals because I've been on the other side of a classroom where a kid returned on a Monday morning having not eaten with their head on a desk. And the one thing that I know for sure is that hungry kids do not learn. Um, that reality holds true across international borders as well. In 2016, I was the National Teacher of the Year, and I traveled with the U.S. State Department to many of the countries that we're discussing today. And I saw firsthand how our aid improves the safety and stability of nations across the globe and fosters goodwill. I also saw how those communities relied on this aid. Right now, in many of those countries that I visited, I see how drought has caused food shortages, jeopardizing school meals for more than 800,000 children. McGovern Dole is one of the most effective tools to prevent against such threats and ensure students across the globe are not distracted from learning because they're wondering where their next meal will come from. Since its establishment, they have fed more, since the establishment of this program, we have fed more than 40 million children in 41 countries. The budget that was proposed in March suggested cutting this program completely. Mr. Isley, what would have happened to children in those countries? I guess if we had cut this um, program as the budget suggested, can you just tell us a little bit what that looks like and estimate how many children in schools would, would have lost access to school meals and nutrition programs? Well, with, um, thank you, Congresswoman. And with respect to the ongoing projects, we would have continued to implement those and work with the host governments on transitioning those programs one of the key goals of the administration is to work very closely with those host countries and to uh, work with them actually on the implementation of laws, the uh, appropriation of money to take over those programs and for them to graduate from uh, U.S. Uh, assistance. So we would have continued to implement the programs existing but would not have uh, put in place new programs with respect to new countries or continued existing. So it's your belief that none of those children would have lost access to meals if the funding had been cut? Not the existing programs that have been already awarded and implemented, but with respect to any future new programs, correct, they would not have uh, received new awards. So any programs that would have required rollover, if they would have been at their expiration, they, they obviously would have not received U.S. funding. We would have worked very hard, though, to see if there was an alternative with respect to our implementing partner or with respect to the host government in terms of taking over that responsibility. They're very important programs. In the USDA's latest International Food Assistance report, it noted that, and I quote, USDA food assistance and capacity building programs are embedded with strategies intended to promote sustainability so recipient countries can continue to benefit well beyond the funding period, much like what you just said. And you mentioned that Kenya was a major success story in those efforts. Can you please share some examples of these strategies and your efforts in other nations to promote sustainability of these programs and continued support from those domestic governments? Um, yes, Congresswoman. Um, an example would, another example beside Kenya, and Kenya uh, was uh, implemented by USDA, I believe, starting in 2004. And uh, this past year, we celebrated the turnover of that program to the government of Kenya, uh, which is a, a key graduation success story. Another one I would highlight is in Burkina Faso, uh, where we're improving literacy, health, and dietary outcomes. Since 2011, a McGovern Dole project has aimed at improving literacy, health, dietary outcomes for preschool and primary school students in north central Burkina Faso. As of 2018, the project covers nearly 1,000 schools and preschools, serving nearly 40 million meals to more than 265,000 children. The multifaceted program has enabled a 17% rise in on-grade level literacy rates. The government of Burkina Faso has increased its public spending on school feeding in the country, 
allocating a budget of more than $36 million for 2018-2019 school year to cover three months of healthy meals for school children in 43 out of the nation's 45 provinces. So that would be an example of us working with the government of Burkina Faso <coughs> on school feeding and nutrition. Thank you. Uh, my time has expired, but I would just ask that as you look towards the next round of identifying priority countries, that you develop a system of feedback and soliciting input so that we can make sure that we are um, addressing the countries that are most in need. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. 